April 27. David captures Rabbah. Meanwhile, Joab was fighting against Rabbah, the capital of Ammon, and he captured the royal fortifications. Joab sent messengers to tell David, I have fought against Rabbah and captured its water supply. Now bring the rest of the army and capture the city. Otherwise, I will capture it and get credit for the victory. So David gathered the rest of the army and went to Rabbah, and he fought against it and captured it. David removed the crown from the king's head, and it was placed on his own head. The crown was made of gold and set with gems, and it weighed 75 pounds. David took a vast amount of plunder from the city. He also made slaves of the people of Rabbah and forced them to labor with saws, iron picks, and iron axes, and to work in the brick kilns. That is how he dealt with the people of all the Ammonite towns. Then David and all the army returned to Jerusalem. When David arrived at Rabbah, he removed the crown from the king's head, and it was placed on his own head. The crown was made of gold and set with gems, and he found that it weighed 75 pounds. David took a vast amount of plunder from the city. He also made slaves of the people of Rabbah and forced them to labor with saws, iron picks, and iron axes. That is how David dealt with the people of all the Ammonite towns. Then David and all the army returned to Jerusalem. The Rape of Tamar Now David's son Absalom had a beautiful sister named Tamar, and Amnon, her half-brother, fell desperately in love with her. Amnon became so obsessed with Tamar that he became ill. She was a virgin, and Amnon thought he could never have her. But Amnon had a very crafty friend, his cousin Jonadab. He was the son of David's brother Shimei. One day, Jonadab said to Amnon, What's the trouble? Why should the son of a king look so dejected morning after morning? So Amnon told him, I am in love with Tamar, my brother Absalom's sister. Well, Jonadab said, I'll tell you what to do. Go back to bed and pretend you are ill. When your father comes to see you, ask him to let Tamar come and prepare some food for you. Tell him you'll feel better if she prepares it as you watch and feeds you with her own hands. So Amnon lay down and pretended to be sick. And when the king came to see him, Amnon asked him, Please let my sister Tamar come and cook my favorite dish as I watch. Then I can eat it from her own hands. So David agreed and sent Tamar to Amnon's house to prepare some food for him. When Tamar arrived at Amnon's house, she went to the place where he was lying down so he could watch her mix some dough. Then she baked his favorite dish for him. But when she set the serving tray before him, he refused to eat. Everyone, get out of here, Amnon told his servants. So they all left. Then he said to Tamar, Now bring the food into my bedroom and feed it to me here. So Tamar took his favorite dish to him. But as she was feeding him, he grabbed her and demanded, Come to bed with me, my darling sister. No, my brother, she cried. Don't be foolish. Don't do this to me. Such wicked things aren't done in Israel. Where could I go in my shame? And you would be called one of the greatest fools in Israel. Please just speak to the king about it, and he will let you marry me. But Amnon wouldn't listen to her, and since he was stronger than she was, he raped her. Then, suddenly, Amnon's love turned to hate, and he hated her even more than he had loved her. Get out of here, he snarled at her. No, no, Tamar cried. Sending me away now is worse than what you've already done to me. But Amnon wouldn't listen to her. He shouted for his servant and demanded, Throw this woman out and lock the door behind her. So the servant put her out and locked the door behind her. She was wearing a long, beautiful robe, as was the custom in those days for the king's virgin daughters. But now Tamar tore her robe and put ashes on her head. And then, with her face in her hands, she went away crying. Her brother Absalom saw her and asked, Is it true that Amnon has been with you? Well, my sister, keep quiet for now, since he's your brother. Don't you worry about it. So Tamar lived as a desolate woman in her brother Absalom's house. When King David heard what had happened, he was very angry. And though Absalom never spoke to Amnon about this, he hated Amnon deeply because of what he had done to his sister. Absalom's Revenge on Amnon Two years later, when Absalom's sheep were being sheared at Baal Hazor near Ephraim, Absalom invited all the king's sons to come to a feast. He went to the king and said, My sheep shearers are now at work. Would the king and his servants please come to celebrate the occasion with me? The king replied, No, my son, if we all came, we would be too much of a burden on you. Absalom pressed him, but the king would not come, though he gave Absalom his blessing. 
Well then, Absalom said, if you can't come, how about sending my brother Amnon with us? Why Amnon? the king asked. But Absalom kept on pressing the king until he finally agreed to let all his sons attend, including Amnon. So Absalom prepared a feast fit for a king. Absalom told his men, wait until Amnon gets drunk, then at my signal, kill him. Don't be afraid, I'm the one who is given the command, take courage and do it. So, at Absalom's signal, they murdered Amnon. Then the other sons of the king jumped on their mules and fled. As they were on their way back to Jerusalem, this report reached David. Absalom has killed all the king's sons. Not one is left alive. The king got up, tore his robe, and threw himself on the ground. His advisors also tore their clothes in horror and sorrow. But just then Jonadab, the son of David's brother Shimei, arrived and said, No, don't believe that all the king's sons have been killed. It was only Amnon. Absalom has been plotting this ever since Amnon raped his sister Tamar. No, my lord the king, your sons aren't all dead. It was only Amnon. Meanwhile, Absalom escaped. Then the watchman on the Jerusalem wall saw a great crowd coming toward the city from the west. He ran to tell the king, I see a crowd of people coming from the Horonaim road along the side of the hill. Look, Jonadab told the king, there they are now. The king's sons are coming, just as I said. They soon arrived, weeping and sobbing, and the king and all his servants wept bitterly with them. And David mourned many days for his son Amnon. Absalom fled to his grandfather Telmai, son of Amihud, the king of Geshur. He stayed there in Geshur for three years, and King David, now reconciled to Amnon's death, longed to be reunited with his son Absalom. Joab arranges for Absalom's return. Joab realized how much the king longed to see Absalom, so he sent for a woman from Tekoa who had a reputation for great wisdom. He said to her, Pretend you are in mourning, wear mourning clothes, and don't put on lotions. Act like a woman who has been mourning for the dead for a long time. Then go to the king and tell him the story I am about to tell you. Then Joab told her what to say. When the woman from Tekoa approached the king, she bowed with her face to the ground in deep respect and cried out, O king, help me. What's the trouble? the king asked. Alas, I am a widow, she replied. My husband is dead. My two sons had a fight out in the field, and since no one was there to stop it, one of them was killed. Now the rest of the family is demanding, Let us have your son. We will execute him for murdering his brother. He doesn't deserve to inherit his family's property. They want to extinguish the only coal I have left, and my husband's name and family will disappear from the face of the earth. Leave it to me, the king told her. Go home, and I'll see to it that no one touches him. Oh, thank you, my lord the king, the woman from Tekoa replied. If you are criticized for helping me, let the blame fall on me and on my father's house, and let the king and his throne be innocent. If anyone objects, the king said, bring him to me. I can assure you he will never complain again. Then she said, Please swear to me by the Lord your God that you won't let anyone take vengeance against my son. I want no more bloodshed. As surely as the Lord lives, he replied, not a hair on your son's head will be disturbed. Please allow me to ask one more thing of my lord the king, she said. Go ahead and speak, he responded. She replied, why don't you do as much for the people of God as you have promised to do for me? You have convicted yourself in making this decision because you have refused to bring home your own banished son. All of us must die eventually. Our lives are like water spilled out on the ground, which cannot be gathered up again. But God does not just sweep life away. Instead, he devises ways to bring us back when we have been separated from him. I have come to plead with my lord the king because people have threatened me. I said to myself, perhaps the king will listen to me and rescue us from those who would cut us off from the inheritance God has given us. Yes, my lord the king will give us peace of mind again. I know that you are like an angel of God in discerning good from evil. May the Lord your God be with you. I must know one thing, the king replied, and tell me the truth. Yes, my lord the king, she responded. Did Joab put you up to this? And the woman replied, My lord the king, how can I deny it? Nobody can hide anything from you.
Yes, Joab sent me and told me what to say. He did it to place the matter before you in a different light. But you are as wise as an angel of God, and you understand everything that happens among us. So the king sent for Joab and told him, All right, go and bring back the young man Absalom. Joab bowed with his face to the ground in deep respect and said, At last I know that I have gained your approval, my lord the king, for you have granted me this request. Then Joab went to Geshur and brought Absalom back to Jerusalem. But the king gave this order, Absalom may go to his own house, but he must never come into my presence. So Absalom did not see the king. Absalom reconciled to David. Now Absalom was praised as the most handsome man in all Israel. He was flawless from head to foot. He cut his hair only once a year, and then only because it was so heavy. When he weighed it out, it came to five pounds. He had three sons and one daughter. His daughter's name was Tamar, and she was very beautiful. Absalom lived in Jerusalem for two years, but he never got to see the king. Then Absalom sent for Joab to ask him to intercede for him, but Joab refused to come. Absalom sent for him a second time, but again Joab refused to come. So Absalom said to his servants, Go and set fire to Joab's barley field, the field next to mine. So they set his field on fire, as Absalom had commanded. Then Joab came to Absalom at his house and demanded, Why did your servant set my field on fire? And Absalom replied, Because I wanted you to ask the king why he brought me back from Geshur if he didn't intend to see me. I might as well have stayed there. Let me see the king. If he finds me guilty of anything, then let him kill me. So Joab told the king what Absalom had said. Then, at last, David summoned Absalom, who came and bowed low before the king, and the king kissed him.